All right, welcome to Geometry 4-3. Uh, we are learning about trigonometry. And before we get into a kind of our splash page here, I just wanted to look at some things that we have explored. Uh, so when we were looking at 45, 45, 90 triangles, we noticed that um, this being 45 degrees, if uh, this the length of this leg was 8, that because this is 45, that this leg would also be 8, right? Uh, now, 90 is, is, a, is a much bigger degree than the 45-degree angle. And um, this, you can see, 90 degrees means this is how wide this is opening up. So because it's opening up more than 45 degrees, it's, the hypotenuse is going to be longer because it's opening up bigger, right? And so uh, the length of the hypotenuse, again, would be 8 rad 2 or 11 rad 3. Let's look at the same type of thing in a 30, 60, 90. Again, the skinniest, or I'm sorry, the smallest angle of 30 degrees is going to have the smallest side of 5, right? 60 is in the middle, and when that opens up, it's going to be more than 5. In this case, uh, 5 red 3, or 8.66. And then your 90 degree angle, which I'll draw in right now, just so you can see. 90 degrees is the biggest side, and you can see that it's 10. And so that there's some relationship here between how big your degrees are uh, and the corresponding side opposite of that, right? Or 60 is going to create something bigger than 5, right? 90 is a bigger degree, and it's going to create the biggest side. So there is that relationship, right? and that's what trigonometry is going to explore. Um, now, we can't just tell it based off just the degree, right? It's not that, yes, 30 degrees opens up this much, but when do we cut off? When does that wall come? So if you look at this example, yeah, it opens up 30 degrees, but in this case, the small side is only 2 um, and then using this kind of what we learned from the last chapter, we know that the hypotenuse is twice the length of the small side, or 4. But just the fact that it's 30 degrees doesn't mean that this is going to be 5 or 2, right? It's just because you can see how big is this going to open up. So again, we just want to say the smaller de the degree within a triangle is going to relate to the smaller side, or the middle degree is going to relate to the middle length. And there is that relationship. So now let's go ahead and look at exactly what those are. Okay, so in your book, you're asked to fill out a few definitions, and I've kind of drawn this. We're on page 507. And uh, first, let's just go over, uh, we, or we have three um, trigonomic ratios, the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. And so first, let's look at, I'll use a different color here, at the sine. What the sine is, is it's the length, and you could write this in your book. Oops. The length of the leg opposite the angle. In this case, it's asking us for angle A. So I'll write here um, angle A divided by the length of the hypotenuse. Length of, I'll just write H for hypotenuse. So again, let's look at that. The sine of angle A, right? So here's angle A, would be the length opposite angle A, so that's A, divide by C. So this would equal um, A divided by C. Let's look at the cosine now. The cosine um, says, and I don't, I don't want these colors confused, so I'll just do all red, is the length adjacent, and we've defined that word before, next to it means, right? And again, this is of angle A, so next to angle A over the length, I'll get them use H for hypotenuse. So the cosine is uh, the length of the leg next. So here's the leg that's next to angle A, B, divided by uh, the hypotenuse, which is C. So this would equal B divided by C. And lastly, let's look at the tangent. The tangent is the length of the opposite over, and again, of angle A, because that's what we're finding, angle A, um, over the length of the leg adjacent. Remember that I'm paraphrasing this with my writing. You could look at the bottom page 507 if you want, uh, of angle A. So what this is, is opposite A over adjacent B. I'll write that in. Oops. A over B. 
Now, um, there's been some creative kind of sayings and stuff that have been made to help you remember this. If you want one, a popular one is for the sine, it's opposite over hypotenuse. For the cosine, it's adjacent over hypotenuse. And for tangent, it's opposite over adjacent. And that's just kind of looking, you know, opposite over hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse. For cosine, it's adjacent over hypotenuse, A over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, opposite over adjacent. Uh, people, people call this, they say, so katoa. <laughs> so if you can remember this, so ka toa, that's just a little friendly way to kind of help you remember these ratios. Um, now, we're going to use this to, to find missing lengths and degrees. Um, I'm going to help you through one problem, and then the book can help you with the rest. But let's go ahead and take a peek. I'm sorry, before we actually get there, uh, let's just look at finding what are the ratios. Uh, and so uh, let me label, finish labeling this. Um, t would be this point here. So given t here, let's come up with just our trigonomic ratios. So sine, if you remember, so. So we're looking at opposite over hypotenuse. And filling that in, that's just 8 over 17. 8 is my opposite, uh, and 17 is my hypotenuse, you know, opposite 90 degrees. Let's look at the cosine. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Again, I'll write this here. So, toa. So if I remember, adjacent over hypotenuse. Again, so adjacent is going to be 15. We're looking, you know, the leg next to T. Uh, what is the sine cosine tangent of T? Okay, so we're looking at starting with angle T here. That's 15. Um, over the hypotenuse, which is 17. And then lastly, our tangent is the opposite. So the opposite is 8. Oh, whoops, I'll do it this way. Opposite over adjacent. That would be 8 over 15. Uh, just a quick uh, idea here, too. We've looked at two examples so far where we're using we're starting from this corner of a triangle, but you, you can have the sine, cosine, and tangent from, from M any angle within the triangle. So yes, we've been using T, but it could as well have been this angle that we started from. And again, opposite would be here. This would be adjacent. So it's going to twist around the triangle as you move. All right, let's look at the next one. Now for this section, you will need um, a scientific or a graphing calculator because we're going to be using um, inverse sign on this problem. Uh, I'm on page 509 looking at problem three using inverses. Um, so you will need a calculator that has, it looks like it says sine, the button would look like um, sine, cosine, or tangent to the, it almost looks like the negative one. So, um, so this is asking us to find the measure of, um, the measure of an angle, x here, to the nearest degree. And so it's, all I know here that I have is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that's using sine, right? Because we know that sine as opposite over hypotenuse. I can't use cosine of x because I'm missing this length right here. So I, I need to find opposite over hypotenuse, 6 over 10. Um, and so first, let's. I started by writing that ratio. Um, sine of x would equal 6 over 10. Um, and the sine of x is really also the, um, the measure of angle x. So I'm trying to find a degree. I should say this is angle measure of x. Um, and the measure of the degree in here um, is going to be the inverse of the sine times my ratio of 6 over 10. Now you do need a calculator to do this, but you're going to push the button of sine negative 1 and multiply it by 6 tenths. Um, you can do 0. 0.6 or parentheses 6 divided by 10. And when you do that, um, you'll find that the measure that you get, the measure of angle x, is equal to 36 degrees, well, rounded to be 37 degrees. All right, good luck in the, in the chapter. Talk to you soon. Bye.